Hi, Keith Van Wimmer here, Van Tech Consulting. Um, today we're going to continue on with uh, our discussion on improving our splices uh, as far as loss and addressing some of the issues on high loss splices. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about arc stabilization on the on the machines on the fusion splicers. So, um, in order to do an arc stabilization, we need a few things. Um, as always, we have the ever popular. Um, homemade shard container for uh, fiber shard management. Um, the other thing that uh, for some of the newer people, if you're not familiar with this, um, I like to make a tape loop for um, shard retention. So just taking a length of uh, inch and a half, inch and a quarter tape, make a loop out of it, and then take this loop and stick that off to the side here, out of the way where you're not gonna get your uh, arm on it. So. Again, this is kind of a mat, so it doesn't stick very good. So I'm going to put that on top of my, uh, just on top of my cleaver box. So this way, if you get a shard on your fingers, um, you can just take it and stick it on there, and then verify that the shard has left your hand. Okay. Fine point tweezers; those are always uh, present. We need some fiber strippers, whichever ones you prefer. There is a length of fiber here. This is bare fiber. It's not dyed, so it's a little difficult to see, but uh, it's right here. Okay. Um, fiber cleaver, chem wipe for cleaning, etc. So, and as always, I do have my safety glasses on at this, uh, at this juncture. So you always want to make sure you have safety glasses on when you're working with fiber. All right. This is an InnoView 3. It is an active clad alignment. Um, meaning that it, it aligns on the outside diameter of the fiber rather than the, the core profile. It is the same as a, as a, uh, as a core alignment um, splicer in the fact that it uses what's called a um, pass or um, profile alignment system in it. So again, it's profiling the outside of the fiber rather than kind of trying to figure out where the core is at and get that, that profile to align. First thing we have to do on these on these guys, you're going to find this, it's going to be different on every machine, but um, this guy uses um, basically a touchscreen menu driven um, type of, of, uh, of display here. Um, on the Fujikuras you have to use buttons to kind of move stuff around and uh, and uh, select your menu item so this guy here in the in the maintenance menu we have if we go into there we have quick optimize adjust position replace electrodes so anytime that you actually replace the electrodes in here so these guys here are the electrodes um, they get a little bit of carbon uh, buildup on there and what will happen is the arc will start to wander so you end up um, getting the arc going off in a different direction. So if anybody's ever TIG welded or watched anything on TIG welding, rather than that arc coming down and hitting at a specific point, it will kind of come over here and arc back over towards this, right? So it, it doesn't go directly. Um, the less accurate that arc is, the lower the quality of your splice. So again, if you have these, and they, they're usually good for somewhere around, um, you know, depending on manufacturer specifications, two to 5,000 arcs. Um, some manufacturers can say that you can clean them, you can grind them. Inno actually provides you with a little grinder. So it's a lot like doing a, a tungsten electrode and TIG. You basically take it, um, I don't have one with me, but you, you would put it in there, grind it on some fine sandpaper, um, and clean it all off and then put it back in. Once you've removed these two electrodes, so since we're going to do this, I'll just take one of the electrodes out. This is, uh, doesn't require any, um, any um, screwdrivers or anything. It's just a little thumb wheel, and the electrode sits in here. And uh, we don't want to be touching the electrode, so you can um, try and handle it with the, uh, with the backside. But again, this is, um, since I've taken this out now, it does have to be stabilized. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, drop it into the holder, put it back in, make sure that that's seated, and then just take this and align that with the, the seat. Snug that up, just small screws so they're not, uh, don't over tighten them. 
So again, we since we've removed this, we have to do an arc stabilization. And each each machine is a little bit differently. Some of them require you to put the fiber uh, straight across both of them. Um, some of them require you to strip, clean, and cleave just like you would in a um, in an arc check. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this one on the view three. It requires you to strip, clean, cleave. So we'll strip that. Give it a little clean here, a little alcohol. And just, you know, do your standard um, preparation. So 9, 10, mil or, uh, 10, 12 millimeters or so. And then um, place that in just like you're doing an arc. Okay, we're going to need another little piece of fiber here. So we're going to take this and just break that off. All right, so prep the uh, right side now. So again, stripping off about an, an inch, an inch of fiber here, just stripping that back. Cleaning it. Again, anywhere from, uh, depending on the, the splicer, anywhere from an 8 to a, uh, to a 16 or 18 millimeter cleave angle, or cleave is good. Place those, set. Okay. So it went ahead and did its, um, it's arcs. It does some like pre-warm up arcs and then it goes in, it brings your fiber in, fuses it and actually starts the uh, stabilization process. Um, and down at the bottom, it has an arc count down here that tells you how many arcs it's doing. Now on the, um, on some of these machines, um, again on the, I see a lot of Fujikuras out there and so on the Fujikuras, they take around when you do an arc stabilization somewhere between about 15 and 20 minutes to do. They do something like, uh, uh, making numbers up here, but they do something like 30 arcs and um, it takes 30 seconds in between the arcs. So it, it's a pretty lengthy process. So again, the only time that you need to do the, the electrode stabilization is when you remove the electrodes or if you take them out to grind them, replace the electrodes, that's, uh, that's the only time. So once you've done this, um, then you're pretty much good to go. So this one says the operation's complete. Didn't say that it failed or anything. It did 20 arcs, um, and that's it. So we've stabilized our electrodes. So let's go ahead and uh, real quick, we'll just take this out and uh, break that. What we're going to do is I'm just going to do a sample splice here. So we'll... Um, see what kind of splice performance we're going to get on it, okay? So again, just going back to our standard uh, stripping methodology. Strip it back, cleave it out to about 10 millimeters. That's my, that's my uh, cleave length. Some folks like the 8 millimeters, some like 12. I mean, there's as long as you're within the realm of uh, acceptable lengths on your uh, machine, you're fine. So whatever you feel comfortable with. Again, the reason that I use 10 um, is there's a line right here at this pad and that is the 10 millimeter so I line my plastic coating right up to the edge there it's just a good visual for me um, easy to see not only in good light but in low light situations um, it just again easier for me so that basically gives me a nine and a half ten millimeter uh, cleave and uh, Makes it really nice. So obviously can't talk and do two, you know, can't talk and chew gum at the same time here. All right, so we're going to go back um, to our workbench. So um, go into our uh, workbench here. We're going to close this up, and we should get an automatic um, burn on this machine. So once it comes in, it checks the end faces, does the pre-arc. And again, as you can see down here, my loss is a 0.00 dB off the machine. Um, 
you know, as much as I, I know these machines, I trust them. Um, so that's going to tell me basically that I'm not going to see this splice. If I was doing an OTDR shot with it, I probably wouldn't see it. Um, but do keep in mind that that number right there, that splice completed and loss calculation off the machine is an estimated value. You know, it's not the only way that we truly know the, the true splice loss on, on the uh, fiber is by doing a bi-directional OTDR averaging. So um, that's a future video that will be coming up is, um, is doing a bi-directional shot and averaging out splices, um, showing you how that's done. So right now, that's it. Um, that is the arc stabilization or electrode stabilization. Um, just go into your maintenance menu on your machine, follow your manufacturer specifications, some like the single fiber going all the way across, some um, like the NOS2 two, two fibers, um, and uh, you know, just follow the, the processes. Do that, uh, stabilize the electrodes. Once the electrodes are stabilized, go back through and uh, just do a sample burn on there. Um, you know, you may also want to uh, proceed on with an arc check as well. Um, and do an arc calibration. Alrighty, so hope this was informative. Uh, pretty simple process. Again, depending on the manufacturers, it, it's going to take uh, anywhere from you know a couple minutes up to 15 minutes, just depending. So you know, fortunately, this is not something that you have to do uh, repetitively. In other words, you know, every time that you're going out to splice. There is one uh, one hint on this, though. Thanks for hanging out and listening to me ramble. Um, if you have a machine and you're getting good burns and um, it's saying that the loss is zeros or 0.01s, which are acceptable splice losses off the machine, um, but when you do your OTDR shots, you're finding that you are getting high loss splices um, and they're failing or they're failing on the machine. You've done the arc check. The arc check comes out and it says it's fine. Well, your arc or your electrode stabilization may need to be done. We've had that in class where a lot of times where guys were getting uh, um, unacceptable results on their on their splices, and so we went back, redid the arc stabilization or the uh, electrode stabilization, and uh, again, if it if it doesn't do it and it says it the operation didn't complete, so this is one of the things with the with the Fujis. Um, is you'll go through 15 minutes and it will say operation not complete or operation failed which means that it was so far out that it basically didn't get to do it all or get it um, stabilized in one round so prep it again and redo it so now we're in the realm of 30 minutes there but again it's it's it does um, does improve your splicing right or eliminates one of the uh, one of the issues. I shall end my rambling. Um, thanks for watching. Hope everybody uh, got something out of this and I appreciate your, uh, your sticking around. So be safe, take care. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.